Shabbat Shabbatiam, brothers and sisters, Hebrews in Jamaica, the Caribbeans, the West, to the four corners of the earth scattered greetings. This Shabbat lesson, we title it Son of Perdition, brothers and sisters. Son of Perdition, right? The title Son of Perdition is used twice in the New Testament, first in John 17, colon 12. And again in 2 Thessalonians 2 3. Let, let's look at both of these uh, scriptures, brothers and sisters. John 17, colon 12, right? Okay, brothers and sisters, take a look at the screen. Right? John 17, colon 12. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that who those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scriptures might be fulfilled right okay brothers and sisters here it is take a look at the screen right second thessalonians 2 colon 3 let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there come a fallen away first and that man of sin may be revealed the son of perdition right so it's two four brothers and sisters right the first simply means man man's doom to destruction right the phrase simply means man doomed to destruction and is not re re reserved for any one individual in fact there are two people to which the title son of perdition is applied in context right john 17 colon 12 right we just read that in reference to judas ascariot while uh, while second thessalonians 2 3 is referring to the man of lawlessness the antichrist who will appear in the end time before Mashiach return? You know, I've mentioned that you know is is both. You could look at it both ways, right? The son of perdition, you know, in, in in the spirit of Judas, and the Antichrist too, cut from the same cloth, right? The word perdition means eternal damnation or utter destruction. It can also be used as a synonym for hell. When a person is called son of perdition, the, the, con the connotation is that of a person in an unredeemable state, someone who is already damned while he is still alive. Yahusha mentioned the son of perdition in his high priestly prayer in John 17 while praying to the Father for his disciples. Yahusha mentions that he protects them and keeps them safe and that none of them were lost except for the son of perdition. That is, the one who was already in damned state right the fact that the phrase is used again to describe the antichrist shows us that forgiveness was not planned for judas elohim could have saved judas move his heart to repentance but he chose not to he was indeed doomed to destruction a good picture of a person who is a son of perdition appears in Hebrews 6, 48. Let's look at that, brothers and sisters, right? Okay, brothers and sisters, here it is on your screen, right? For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the work of Kadesh and have tasted the good word of Elohim, the power of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of Elohim afresh and put him to an open shame. So, what that means, brothers and sisters, let me go, that, go over that again for you. If they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of Elohim afresh. What that means, brothers and sisters, once you come into this faith, you know. In the walk in the work Hakadesh in Yahusha Mashiach, right? And you begin to, you know, move in uprightness and keeping the commandments and so forth and so forth, right? And you fall apart and you fall away, right? Only to be renewed again. It's like you crucify the Mashiach a second and third time and fourth time every time you fall and fall away and fall back into the world, right? And do wickedness, right? That's what it means. You understand? You crucify to themselves the son of Elohim afresh. I mean, you you know, it's like it's like uh, you have a freshly um, uh, freshly cut wound, right? And then the wound is healing, 
but then you go back and you pick at it you pick at the scalp and you you know when you, you keep picking picking at it you reopen that, that 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 wound again right that's what it means you know and it goes on to say and put him to an open shame right again you put the mash at the shame because he had redeemed you and then he went back out in the world to be a part of the world and his wickedness. Yes, I mean, for the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh off upon it and bringeth forth herbs meet to, for them by whom it is dressed receive blessing from Elohim. Right? So in Hebrews 6, column 48, which describes a person who, like Judas, has experienced a certain closeness to Elohim and has a good understanding of salvation, but then denies it. That's exactly what I was saying, brothers and sisters, right? You come into this faith, you walk in this faith, right? You know the blessing, right? Of the most, uh, and what he has for us, those who are keeping his Lord's commandments and statutes. And you say you believe in the name of Yahusha, but you still deny the salvation thereof, right? Right, brothers and sisters? So a good picture of a person who is a son of perdition appears in Hebrews 6, 4, 8, which describes a person who, like Judas, has experienced a certain closeness to Elohim and has a good understanding of salvation, but then denies it. Instead of bearing good fruit, he bears thorns and thistles. Exactly. Right? Right, brothers and sisters? This is a person who sees the path to salvation which is trust in Elohim's grace to cover sin, Ephesians 2, 8 to 9. Let's look at that, brothers and sisters. Take a look at the screen. Okay, brothers and sisters, Hebrews 2, colon 8 to 9. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourself is in the gift of Elohim, not of works, least any man should boast. Right? So, who does the saving? The Ruach HaKadosh. That's the gift. Right? For by grace you are saved through faith. So what is the faith? Yahusha. Right? And not of yourselves. It is the gift of Elohim. So the most I give you Yahusha and the Ruach HaKadosh. Because grace is the Ruach HaKadosh. And the faith is Yahusha. Not of works, least any man should boast. So there you have it, brothers and sisters. Right? It is not of my will or your will that you are saying is the will of the most high he chose whom he chose from the beginning right to be saved and he chose those who from the beginning to be damned like judas and men who have the spirit of judas and hashatan right that's will of the most high just like the most high chose israel as his people from the foundation of the earth there's nothing we can do about that we are his people and the sheep of his pastors, brothers and sisters. Right? But unfortunately, many of our people within ethnic Israel have the spirit of Judas and Hashatan. And they were, even though they are the bloodline of Israel, Yashrael, some of them are destined to be damned from the beginning because they are wicked and they will not change and come back to the glory of Yahusha and the salvation which they so deny day in and day out, right? And so instead either flatly denies the existence of Elohim or denies Elohim's gift of salvation, preferring to pay his own debt, right? Judas shows the second part, punishing himself by suicide instead of accepting grace. You know, you see, it's one thing in the balance, he says. You see, Judas could have, could have saved himself. Had he just humbled himself, okay, you made a mistake, you did wrong against the Mosai. If you had come to the Mosai and asked forgiveness, the Mosai would have probably forgive you. But instead, he chose to save himself, he chose to do what he wants to do, and guess what happened? The Mosai turned him over to himself, he ended up killing himself. Right? However, Judas and the Antichrist are extreme cases. It is never right for a human being to label another person in son of perdition. Because only Elohim knows the ultimate future of each human soul. Only with these two individuals, individuals did Elohim choose to reveal his plan for their eternal damnation. With every other person, no matter how lost or evil he may seem, we are to hope 
and pray for his redemption. Right, first Timothy 2 calling 1. Okay, brothers and sisters, you know this this scripture is coming from the Sefa Bible, first Timothy calling 2 1 to 7. Right? Timotheus, a leaf, first Timothy 2 calling 1 to 7, Sefa Bible, right? First of all, then I urge that petitions, prayers, intercision, and thanksgiving to be made for all men. For sovereigns and all those who are in authority, in order that we lead a calm and peaceful life in all reverence and seriousness. For this is good and acceptable before Elohim, our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of truth. For there is one Elohim and one mediator between Elohim and man, the man Mashiach, Yahusha. So you see right there, this does a tell about religion and, and, and Christianity and so forth, right? Many churches out there today, brothers and sisters, have their own intercision, own mediator. Some have Mary, some have this, some have that. You saw me denying the salvation. This is what I was still talking about earlier. Deny the salvation that Yahuwah has orchestrated and created for us, Israel, Yashrael. Denied. So, what they do, they instead of putting Yahusha as mediator as what Timothy is saying here they put Mary they put all top type of intercision intermediate to pray to so that mediator entity can go to the Mosai the Mosai not gonna accept that you know what I mean but if you do not repent and come to Yahusha directly humble yourself as a child and pray to him that he may send your prayers to the father in hopes that the father might hear your prayer receive it and bless you because the most i know your heart brothers and sisters but it's order to this you can't just go straight to the most I, you can't just go straight, straight to the most side the most i says so what happened to my son have i not sent my son to you hmm? you pray to yahusha you pray to the most in yahusha's name you pray to the father abuna yahuwah in yahusha's name that's the order but he's the one that sacrificed for us, not us for him. You see. For there is one Elohim and one mediator between Elohim and man, the man Messiah, Messiah Mashiach, Yahusha, who gave himself a ransom, who gave himself a ransom for all to be witnessed in its own season, for which I was appointed a proclaimer and I am missionary. I am speaking the truth in Messiah, Mashiach, and not lying, a teacher of nations in belief and truth, brothers and sisters, right? Okay, brothers and sisters, meaning of 1 Timothy 2, calling 1 to 7. Accordingly, Paul admonishes Timothy to discharge the ministry he was given by the by laying of, of hands and tells Timothy the things which we have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses and trust these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also in order to properly exercise his holy calling and kindle afresh his gift consistent with his spiritual heritage paul urges timothy to do two fundamental things discern who are faithful men who are willing to learn then teach others also so you gotta have the spirit of discernment you have to pray for that spirit of discernment right and that, that spirit of discernment also will help you to break down scriptures and rightfully dividing it so you could tell or teach others also right and encourage them to also go and read and study for themselves you see so one discern who are faithful men who are willing to learn and teach others also and trust to these faithful men the things which Timothy learned from Paul help them understand it thoroughly enough that they will be able to teach it. Paul admonishes Timothy to conduct a ministry of multiplication. It is inferred that Timothy should not get distracted by squeaky wheels. He should not invest his time in those who are needy but unwillingly to listen and change. Those unwillingly to be taught and grow, he should find people eager to learn and apply the lessons of the gospel and invest his time and energy with those 
then he should do what he can to help these people teach others who will in turn teach others this multiplication strategy is the way the apostles used to spread the bizarre the gospel to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and then to the entire earth you see brothers and sisters so what does Yahusha mean by the son of perdition brothers and sisters what does Yahusha mean by the son of perdition the original Greek word for perdition is Apollias Apollias brothers and sisters right translation of perdition means of destruction or of ruin so the son of perdition means the son of destruction or ruin right who is the lost son of perdition brothers and sisters Judas Iscariot who after betraying Yahusha committed suicide instead of repenting and went to hell for everlasting destruction as I'm saying Judas could have Judas could have saved himself by humbling himself and repenting but he chose not to because of pride and there's a saying pride coming before the fall there you have it and pride is also of Hashatan because of various because he is the father of lies and he created pride or developed pride right and that same very spirit caused him to fall from heaven as lightning right by saying those whom you gave me I have kept and none of them is lost except the son of perdition right is Yahusha saying that he lost someone that he was expected to keep or should have kept no gave does not connote the need to keep when chosen as one of the 12 apostles of Yahusha Judas Ascariah may or may not have known that he would betray Yahusha three years later Hashatan may have thought that he had managed to infiltrate Yahusha's inner circle with a thief whose love of money could be used later to betray but Elohim the father and Yahusha knew perfectly well that Judas Ascariah would betray and that his betrayal would lead to Yahusha's arrest and, crucifix and crucifixion and had included him among the twelve for that purpose throughout the Bible Elohim used both heaven bound and hell bound people to direct history and that's happening right now brothers and sisters in this modern time those who associate being used by Elohim with salvation while continuing to live in sin do so at their own peril hmm. many will say to me in that day Adonai Adonai have we not prophesied in your name cast out demons in your name done many wonders in your name then I will declare to them I never knew you depart from me you who practice lawlessness right and what is a lawlessness brothers and sisters not keeping his commandments not adhering to his word you understand you practicing worshiping on the wrong day celebrating their feast days that the Babylonian system give unto you is connection to 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 false god and idol worshiping brothers and sisters lawlessness not keeping the commandments right John 17 colon 13 but now I come to you and these things I speak in the world that ye may have my joy fulfilled in themselves right the Yahusha let the eleven apostles hear this prior to the Father. Yes, these things I speak in the world. Right? So why? The question is to ask why? That they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. <laughs> you see that right, right, brothers and sisters? It's also recorded in John 17 13. Right? Alright, brothers and sisters. So in the book of Revelation, a prophet named John experienced a vision of the risen Mashiach who asked him to convey a message to each of the seven congregations of Asia, Minor, Ephesus, Samarna, Pergamon, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and, Las Alo and Loidicoia. Right? To the Pergamon congregation, this is the message. And to the angel of the congregation, this is in Pergamon, right? Thus say the one who has the, sh the sharp two-edged sword, I know where you dwell, where the throne of Hashatan is, and you 
hold fast to my name and you did not deny my faith even the days of Antipas my witness my faithful one who was killed among you where Hashatan dwells right brothers and sisters one of a symbolic level that throne of Hashatan mentioned in this passage represents a power in opposition to Elohim a power that is embodied in Rome and imperial might throughout Revelation a system of symbol associated Satan Hashatan depicted as a dragon or serpent with a Roman Empire Emperor depicted as a beast. Unlike other early writers, John the Prophet did not encourage his audience to honor or obey the Emperor, but instead encouraged by means of his symbol and rhetoric resistance. Right? The key to understanding this church is the, the physical geography in connection with demonic geography, so to speak. Right, brothers and sisters, if you take a look at the screen, right, you will see uh you will see uh, a map of Pergamon that is in uh Turkey. Right, brothers and sisters, that's in Turkey, Pergamon, right? You can see it on the screen, brothers and sisters. Pergamon, Turkey, right? And it, and it, and it's, and uh, also too, brothers and sisters, right? Turkey is a very, um, very interesting location. Cause that's where your, 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 your um, Mount Arat is located, right? That's where Mount Arat is located, and also the seat of Hashatan right take a look at the screen you will see the image um the seed and the image of Hashatan his throne where his throne is right right you see all the images right brothers and sisters so Mount Arad is a very interesting location right brothers and sisters Mount Arad is a very interesting location because of the flood that's where Noah Ark rested on Mount Arad, brothers and sisters, right? And very interestingly, that Noah also recorded and uh, marked uh, his location where he actually arrived or landed. The most I landed him on a on. If you look at the screen right now, brothers and sisters, right? If you look at the screen. There's an image. There's an image of a rock and it got eight engraving in this in the sign of a cross right and you will see those eight engraved images and those image and those markings represent Noah and his three sons and their three wives and his wife brothers and sisters right it's very 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 interesting and historical artifacts and fact again proving that my father's word is true and it will not come back to him void hallelujah right brothers and sisters so as you can see with the, 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 the on the on the on the uh the stone the eight signs right and then you see the the, the news clip or uh, the uh, paper newspaper clip of the ark and then you could see aerial um, pictures that has been taken on top of Mount Arad and the surrounding areas you could, you could see the actual <laughs> you know what I mean arc or line of the arc or you know formation you know impression of the arc right on top of the Mount Arad right brothers and sisters is a very interesting thing to see you could see that you could actually see the outline of some type of vessel a huge vessel right brothers and sisters you know you cannot make these things up brothers and sisters right you see all of that right even a drone image and it points so point by point right very amazing brothers and sisters very amazing right so the key to understanding this church is its physical geography in connection with the dem demonic geography so to speak this is ecclesiastical and satanic geography is significant 
for the devil's dwelling is in the same city wherein this church dwell affected the congregation spiritually so what does revelation 2 colon 30 says about satan's or hashatan's present in pergamos first the devil dwelt there being a spirit the devil does not need a house or a kitchen or a bed or such like but he is said to dwell in pergamos in that when he was not on his travels job 1 colon 7 2 colon 2 first peter 5 colon 8 and write these things and then go research and read them for your silver brothers and sisters right he lived and abode there he was present there personally more than anywhere else what a place second not only did the devil dwells there but he even had his throne there literally right you could see an image of that on your screen right now brothers and sisters right right called saturn c revelation 2 colon 13 is saturn's throne Bespeaking his government, rule and reign in Pergamos, the devil exercised greater sway, influence and power than in other places. The devil is the god of this world. You know, Second Corinthians 4, 4, in that most of its citizens live and die in unbelief and sin, thus serving and following Hashatan. But in Pergamos, he was even more powerful as the king ruling from his invisible throne. You can imagine what things some people might claim about such remarks today. It is not politically correct to say that that might hurt Pergamos economy but putting people off the city. What was John thinking of in saying a thing like that? He is supposed to be an apostle. Where is the love? <laughs> but these are the words of scriptures. I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. We just spoke about that earlier. Where Satan dwelleth, Revelation 2, calling 13. These are the words of Yahusha. Yahusha Mashiach and the Holy Spirit. Right? So, brothers and sisters, I hope you understand, you know, what who is the son of perdition. You know, speaking of both Judas and Hashatan. Right? So, we must come back to the Mosai boldly. We must come back to the Most of Yahusha boldly in Yahusha's name, brothers and sisters, and build the altar in your heart. Right? Not a physical altar, but an altar in your heart because the Most High require, you know what I mean, a broken and contrite spirit. You understand, brothers and sisters? He wants, he wants you to come to Yahusha in spirit and in truth. Right? He wants to sit in the throne room, your holy of holies. He want to sit on your, in your throne room, your holy of holies, which is your heart. That's where he wants to build your altar, your spiritual altar, not a physical altar. Because brothers and sisters, we already have an altar. It's at Mount Zion. And we need to go back to Mount Zion and build up the walls of Zion and the tabernacle of Dar within the Gus right because although the scriptures speak about our forefathers building altars yes there's nothing wrong with that right but like again just as how the most abolished animal sacrifice and yahusha has become the permanent and more perfect sacrifice once and for all the same thing goes for altars too brothers and sisters the altars represent the Mashiach, right now that the Mashiach is here, the altar should be in our hearts. That's where we need to set up our altar and pray to him in spirit and in truth, brothers and sisters. Right? So you gotta be careful. You understand, brothers and sisters? Because many of our people will set up these things and then and find themselves worshiping Hashatan. Thinking that they're led by Ruach HaKadosh right so the most important thing is get your throne room prepared set up your altar in your heart pray to the most high yahoo and yahusha's name in spirit and in truth and come back to these laws commandments and statutes brothers and sisters on that note brook yahoo atizipaho brook yahusha mshak shinar shinar vishinar blessed love and shalom